This is the Aftermarket Radio Network. So I'm in Florida and people continue to tell me I'm on vacation because it's like three degrees back in Buffalo and no, I'm working. I'm here at the Institute's Summit in St. Petersburg. There's water all around us, beaches all around us, but I'm working. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Welcome to the podcast. Jennifer Hulbert, Service Auto Plus in Calcium, New York. I mean, way up where you live in the Watertown, uh, New York area, yes. in, in foothills of the Adirondacks, it's cold. It is very cold. And in fact, what's the town up there that has some of the coldest temperatures ever? Forge, uh, something like that? Old Forge. Old Forge, yes. yes. I remember that years ago. Forge used to have some of the coldest temps up there in, in New York State. Family business. Dad started your second generation. You're in Napa Auto Care. And we're here in the studio at the Institute Summit. We're with Jennifer because she just joined the organization. She's been with the organization for a long time, but as a coach facilitator. Congrats. Thank you. I'm very excited. How, how cool is that? Hey, thanks to our sponsor, Napa, for providing you this episode. How does Napa support your auto care center through national marketing? Well, Napa will build upon the already successful Know How for All campaign and promote auto care offering and services to the Do It For Me customer with support through sales driver promotions, optimized targeted media that give your repair facility an online presence on Napa Online. Now, if you're interested in partnering with Napa Auto Care and capitalizing on the Napa Know How For All national marketing campaign, contact your servicing Napa Auto Parts store. Enjoy. Does dad still come in every day and look around? He does. So his main responsibilities now are to plow the driveway, mow the lawn, take care of the furnace, just <laughs> get out of the house every day, come in, take a look, and then leave by nine. So does dad like the fact that his new role is a handyman? He does. He sees that the direction that I am taking the business is far different than what he did. We're focused on financial numbers. We're focused on building staff. We're focused on culture. He was set the, the role for that, but today is a definitely a different market than it was 22 years ago when I joined the business. Jennifer, does he ever come up, put his arm around you and said, I'm so proud of you, daughter? He does. Cool. He does. That's good. <laughs> Sometimes that doesn't happen. I mean, does he also look over and says, why are you doing that? He does. <laughs> <laughs> what would one of those be? Why are we purchasing a brand new alignment machine? Ah, because it should last 100 years. It should not. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't. <laughs> Or why are we focusing on service advisor training and making a financial investment? And then he sees now how our average RO has risen, ah. how our profits have risen, how our customer satisfaction has risen, and sees the benefit in that. You're a smart girl, he says. He does. It takes time for all that stuff to work, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yeah. I've surrounded myself with some very smart people. So that's one of the reasons of our success. Today. Yeah. And you were telling me you don't want to micromanage your people. I do not. So you looked at an opportunity to become a coach facilitator here at the Institute, which is kind of neat. I mean, there's only one way it's going to pull anything would pull you out is that you need something else to do. That's within your wheelhouse. Yes. And the group process is something I'm very passionate about, something I've been involved with for 18 years. The reason that our business is at the level that we are, so being able to share that knowledge with other shops and watch them grow is very personally satisfying to me. And I'm with a company that has very strong core values similar to my own. So it was just a, a great match. So when she says 18 years ago, I'm assuming you're talking about RLO. Correct. Right? Yes. And uh, John Waffler and, and the whole team. And of course, Cecil RLO is now part of the Institute and it's now kind of rebranded as groups, right? Yes. Groups. Think of a 20 group. I think the whole world understands that networking group. So now you're in alignment with what we're going to talk about. When I was asking about being a coach is one thing and a facilitator is another. So coaching is really when you're working with a client one-on-one. -on -one. And, and are those typically new type of clients? They are. So currently I have three coaching clients. Um, they are very early in their business. They're trying to discover what finances are, uh, what gross profits are, how to structure different sections of their business. One coaching client knew that he needed to increase his billable hours, knew that he didn't have his technicians in the right seats didn't have the right process and just hasn't made a lot of money or any really profit in the last year or two. So he saw one of Cecil's 
trainings and called the Institute. And we've been working on increasing his billable hours. We've Im- implemented a parts matrix. He has his service advisor in training and they're actually making a profit now. And that's only been in the last three months. What's amazing is you just described a lot of things that help the individual pay for his coaching. Absolutely. And everybody says can't afford coaching. And here you're describing to me one incident or one individual, one company in a very young part of their startup career that said, I got to do this coaching thing because I don't know what I don't know. Correct. I hear these stories. I've got to tell these stories. I've got to make reference to them. I got to repeat them because there's just not enough people out there. You know, the top shops get it. But part of so much of what I do to advance the aftermarket is to get that next level, that next struggling group to open their eyes and to realize. We heard some very profound things from Michael Smith today about the number of retirements and closing businesses that there's going to be out there. And it's scary. It was eye opening. And so this industry of ours is going through a, a morph, if you will. The people that are going to pay attention to their business are going to be here for it and will be able to take opportunity with them, be it in buying and or being selling, but selling at a price that's indicative to the blood, sweat, and tears they put into the business. Absolutely. We've seen that started already, even in my small market. I've seen four shops close in the past two years. Would you ever be interested in number two? Not right now. Not right now. I mean, obviously, you bitten off a huge responsibility here. You're coaching three clients and you're facilitating, what, one group? Correct. One group. And explain to the audience how that works, what the group, when you meet and when you talk and when you Zoom. Sure. So a group usually consists of 18 to 20 shop owners. They are assigned a partner. So they have an individual accountability partner along with access to their facilitator coach. We have three in-person meetings a year. Part of those in-person meetings are to evaluate the whole shop. So we go in, break into four different teams, do a full evaluation of the shop, give the owner feedback on areas for improvement. The other time is spent with training, reviewing our financial composite numbers, because if you don't know your numbers, you're never going to grow your business. So we, we spend a lot of time on financial numbers. In between meetings, we have a couple of Zoom meetings as an entire group, and then the facilitator does reach out individually to the different members once a month just to make a connection, talk about what they need, Um, and that ranges from hiring new personnel, developing pay plans, talking about profits, talking about simple things like parts matrix or labor multipliers to make sure that they're profitable and to grow their business. Let's talk about accountability. To me, I think that's one of the biggest things you would want to hire a coach to do for you, be it your strategic plan and who's going to do what, when, and how. And I know I have to get my number up, and it's just words until I put it down on paper Correct. or someone like Jennifer comes by and taps me on the head and said, when are you going to do that? <laughs> you said you'd do it last month. And I think there's a point that when the... the composite financials and the the, the partner that you have within the group. The reason to join a coaching company and get inside of a group is that, number one, you don't want to be the smartest person in the group. Am I right? Correct. But you also want a, a little peer pressure, which is what I think accountability is. Am I right? It is. How did it work for you 18 years ago? Um, I was terrified. I didn't know what I didn't know. There was a lot of information about the industry that I didn't understand. And I knew I needed help to, to get that a level of understanding. When I was assigned my first composite partner, it was a lot of learning, a lot of them coaching me because they were senior members in the group process. And as the group has evolved, we've seen that same pattern. You have your senior members teaching and coaching some of the new people coming in, but you also have other members holding you accountable for what you say you're going to do. And sometimes those discussions are difficult. Sometimes those discussions are, I just need to get my head on straight. I need to look at it a little bit differently. Sometimes those discussions are, I know what I need to do. I just don't know how to do it. Having 18 to 20 other people that are doing the same thing that you're doing, if you need help in an area, there's going to be someone there like, I had this happen. I did it this way. 
it didn't work. I did it this way and it worked. So you don't feel alone. I think that's a lot of the automotive industry who don't belong to a coaching client is they're, they're just out there. They're floundering. They don't know what they don't know. They're not getting any feedback and they're just doing whatever they're doing, but not getting any results. <laughs> so I got it. The reason we're telling this story is I think the people that don't know how this works, what to expect, you need to hear it and you need to ask yourself, will this work for me? And can I participate in this kind of environment? And even if you can't, it's almost like you need to give it a shot. Let's get out of our comfort zone when it is that you want to grow a smarter, bigger, better, more profitable company that you can hire the unicorn, the mastery style people to come in and work for you. It just doesn't happen because there was a lunar eclipse. It just doesn't happen. It's intentional. Oh my God, I'm waiting for the best, newest vitamin to come out so that I can be a a superstar businessman. It's a process. It is a process. And let's go back to when you were, you had a person assigned to you in in one of the groups, okay? So you you worked with someone else and they were, if you will, phone a friend, right? Correct. Someone that you can call anytime. Yes. When you were assigned another individual, somebody new in the group, right? It says, hey, Jennifer, it's great. You're working with this person, but we've got a new person. Would you work with that new person? When you teach, even though before you even were thinking of ever becoming a coach or facilitator, you were teaching. And when you teach someone, and I don't mean in a formal way as a teacher or a presenter, but when you're, yeah, well, I've done it like this. And what about this? And I've learned that you actually learn and you become better. The minute you go on record for something, it's almost like you own it, right? Yes. Yes. So I learn something new every conversation that I have, even if I am their coach. I learned something new about their business. I learned something new about how they see that situation happening. And if we're not learning, we're not growing. So part of the the group process for me is surrounding myself with like-minded or smarter individuals, because like you said before, I never want to be the smartest person in the room. I always want to learn something different or a different perspective. Um, I've been very lucky. I've been in the group two process. We, we number our groups. We've had phenomenal shop owners in and out of that group. It's helped me to see that I'm able to give back to an industry that I'm so passionate about. And that's what I'm able to do being a coach and a facilitator with the Institute. Are you a repair shop owner? Do you find yourself struggling with any of the following? Uncertainty about the future and competition. Are you spending too much time managing chaos and struggling with new employees? Do you lack time to invest in learning best practices or there's no time to spend on effective marketing? How do your finances look? Are you reactive rather than proactive? Do you know where you should be, when to grow, and when to shrink? If any of those situations describe where you are today, well, you are finally in the right place. Repair Shop of Tomorrow is Napa Auto Care's newest endorsed partner. They are helping shops all over the nation run more profitable automotive repair shops, and they help by utilizing proven business best practices, marketing, and coaching to leverage Napa programs to drive quality, car count, sales, and profits. RSOT will look at productivity, efficiencies, effective labor rate, average hours per car, labor profit percent, measure and manage labor, and how you can create net profit. Team up with the coaches to create systems, operations, and procedures using a business flow chart to help you reach your goals. RSOT will help measure and manage the results to help each business succeed. Now, best of all, it's not do-it-yourself. It's all done for you. Their goal is to help service professionals do what they do best, fix cars and build relationships at the counter and in the community. RSOT will take the other minutia off your plate. The Repair Shop of Tomorrow offers a tier-based program to not only generate more business today, but to transform your shop into a top-level shop of tomorrow. RSOT can teach you how to make your shop profitable, and they can teach you how to recruit and how to make more labor dollars for your shop. Interested in Repair Shop of Tomorrow? We'll call 440-545-1230. That's 440-545-1230 for a free 20-minute no-obligation consultation or contact. You're servicing Napa Auto Parts store. What have you learned in the last couple of months? <laughs> Coaching and facilitating is very different than being a group member. 
Um, <laughs> there's a little more pressure. You're looked at as the expert, even though I don't see myself that way. But your team knows that. They do. Yeah. They do. The coaching clients are so thirsty for information and so eager to improve. And like I said before, I'm the biggest cheerleader for people, for my team, for my coaching clients, for my group members. I love to see people do well. And I love to give them that energy and that. Ooh, I love that. that I give them the energy. Okay. So how's that work? Well, I just had a group six member who has been looking for a technician for a very, very long time. And he didn't think he was ever going to be able to do it. And I said, call me on Saturday after your interview. And unfortunately, that interview got pushed back. So I called him Monday morning. What happened? And he says, you know what? He came in and, and I have his toolbox here. And I'm, woohoo, yay, I'm so excited for you. You know, let's get excited and let's make out a plan and let's see what we're going to do. And and passing that energy on to get him excited to make that person a good staple in his business is exciting to me. I love to celebrate other people's accomplishments. Wow. And you make lifelong friends, don't you? You do. I have oh several members. The great thing about social media is those members who are no longer in the group process, we still keep in contact. I've watched their kids grow up. They've watched my children grow up. I've watched their businesses evolve. I've watched them sell their businesses. I've watched them sell their businesses and move onto a boat. Um, I've watched them sell their businesses and move to Mexico. I've watched them evolve their businesses and do something else that they're passionate about. Sometimes that has been, you know, coaching and working with, with other automotive clients or investing in their children's businesses. And it's wonderful. It's amazing. We have great, such a great industry. I'm a young shop owner. I've been in it three years. I'm spinning my wheels. I hate to admit that I'm struggling because my ego said that, well, I was a good tech. I could be a good business person. And uh, you know about it. Um, doesn't matter if the person's local in a networking group that you know of. Someone called you out of the blue and says, hey, uh, Jennifer, would you talk to this individual? What's the 30 second elevator speech on why to get involved in a coaching company? I give them my personal example that this is what a coaching group has done for me. It's taking me from knowing very little about the automotive repair industry and to where I am today. I understand profits. I understand the structure of a business. I'm a very analytical person. So I've always been dove into the numbers. And if you do this, you're going to have success, but you have to understand the information to begin with. And that doesn't happen overnight. Did you think you would, uh, become an accountant, become a great leader, become an individual who could coach people to greatness way back when you joined dad? Absolutely not. <laughs> when you ended up getting a coaching company, was it your humbleness? Your ego didn't get in the way of saying, well, I got to get somebody to come and teach me. No, my dad had started that process with a different management company okay. prior to the RLA. Okay, ah, that's great. Um, okay. So he had the foresight that we need help, that we don't know everything yeah. that we don't know. Yeah. So I had gone to a five-day class that RLO had put on, and the next month we joined the group process. Seeing the information that they presented and how to structure, especially the financial aspect of mm -hmm. your business, because... If you're not making a profit, you're not going to have sustainability. Yeah. And that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. And keep in mind, as you're listening to this, and, and, you know, if you're a fan and you follow this show and it's really helped change your life, this is not another one of those shows that Carm does occasionally to try to push the envelope of people getting involved in coaching and or a group. I got on your website just before we flew down here. And in the about thing about you, it says that um, you're the mama bear of the team. <laughs> Has that been in there a while? Or did you just write that? That's been in there a while. So I am the person that wants to see my whole shop do well. And that's not just the individual employee, that's their families. I recently listened to a podcast that said, beware of companies that say that this is a family environment because that can be very negative. Yep. We have the exact opposite experience with that. And we just had our company Christmas party. We do it in January just because it's easier to schedule. And everyone has the same sentiment that we are a close knit family group, that we do things to benefit us as a group. 
that we allow the time needed, not in excess, but needed to handle outside family issues because we are people. We all have children. We all have lives outside of what we do on a daily basis. So I want to make sure whatever decision I'm making about the company is going to benefit my employees going forward. So Jennifer, did you ever stop and ask yourself, hmm, I got to pinch myself. I'm a successful female in this mostly male industry. Yes. One that I've been questioned on recently And I've had people, individuals, including Cecil Bullard, come and say, I have to ask, you know, why do you want to do this? The coaching and facilitating group are mostly white middle-aged men. And he said, I've I've seen you interact and you have that level of compassion, but yet able to hold people accountable. And that's what they were looking for. We need more female technicians. We need more female shop owners. We need more female coaches and facilitators. So maybe this for you, when I think of all the coaching companies that I know, this is breakthrough for you and a a great message to send to the industry. It is. And women can do anything that I feel a man can do. Absolutely. And and I'm not a feminist in in any aspect of my life. Um, I'm very confident in the knowledge that I have. And I don't think that that should be taken in a male dominated industry as a negative because I can do the same thing that a, a male shop owner or a male facilitator can do and possibly bring a different spin on yeah. it with some compassion. Think about a woman's perspective on customer service. If there's anything that says, oh, customer service, female clients, talk to Jen, <laughs> right? She's on our team. She's got the greatest insight and or maybe will allow you to ying when you wanted to yang and give you some great ideas about that because the surveys from many female people about what goes on on our counters isn't sometimes too favorable. Correct. And just seeing it from a different perspective, I think is important. And I think you should get in a fully entire female run shop, you should get a male perspective because they're different, but they're equally as positive. Yeah. So I'm a new client. Hi, Jen, it's Carm. And you look over all my stuff and now it's our second meeting. Mm -hmm. And you say, Carm, I want you to concentrate on these key metrics or KPIs, whatever you want to call them. I know you have to look at the P&L to under to discover it, but what would be in your top three? So new coaching clients normally don't have statements, so we're looking the information out of their management system. Okay. Um, I'm going to focus on profitability, and I'm going to focus on processes, and probably those two to begin with. If you do not have profitability, you are going to have a very hard time making any changes you're going to have a hard time continuing to afford the coaching program and the processes that you do it. Everyone's different. The three individual coaching clients that I have right now are completely different personalities. The profitability thing, stumbling into the fact that they don't have a really good profit and loss statement. Oh, absolutely. See? So I guess what you're saying, let's get the numbers in order. I, let's get this accountant on board. Let's get a monthly statement. Yet we can start working on these processes while in the next month and a half, two months, whatever your number is, you've got to give me a hardcore, semi-accurate profit and loss statement. And if not, we don't know what levers to push or pull. Well, it's not even profit and loss. It's the profitability in your management system. So following a parts matrix, putting in the actual cost of your technicians. We have a tool called the dashboard that pulls information out of the individual management system. And I had a coaching client that had 100% labor gross profit. Whoops. They didn't have any cost entered in for the technicians. They said that, you know, I pay my technician this hourly wage. They said, well, you don't because you're not billing enough hours, but you're paying your technician more. So let's look at what your real cost per billable hour is. Let's enter that in your management system so we get an accurate labor gross profit. Okay, so so forward. you're looking at the management system to give you the guidance while you're working on a strong profit and loss statement. Correct. Because at the end of the day, it's still the net operating income. You still have no clue what's going on with costs, right? Correct. And okay, I get that. That's smart. Pushback. Are you kidding me? Are you <laughs> kidding me? I can't do this. 
I haven't received that. <laughs> Good for you. Yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you join a group process, you know that this is required. Yeah. So coaching clients know that, you know, this is what we're working towards. There's a whole or presentation to them of what they're looking to get out of it and what they are required to put into it. So I haven't really received that kind of pushback yet, but I have enough years experience in doing what I've done to prove that it works. Yeah. So hopefully that information helps them to, to does, make some changes. Does Jennifer Hulbert have a superpower? <laughs> I don't feel that I do. I don't know what others would say. I have very close relationships that I look to develop and I look to be your biggest cheerleader. Wow. I want to be on your team. <laughs> uh, who's influenced you most in your life? My parents. They're still married. They're going to be ce celebrating their 50 wedding anniversary this summer. Um, God bless a, them. A very solid home life, home. They were my biggest cheerleaders when I was young. I've been married. will be 24 years this year. John Waffler has taught me a lot of what I have known. John is has been my facilitator through my GERT process. Getting to know Kent and Cecil has been exciting. They see the industry a little bit differently than what the old RLO did. And what they want to do to change the industry is exciting. I have individual group members that I could probably give you a list of, of 10 or 15 who I feel have helped to influence me. So... I try to get information and relationships all across everything that I do. And I think each one of those has a, an impact. Give us your secret on how you recharge. <laughs> For business purposes, going to a group meeting because ah. you're surrounded with your peers at home. Sometimes it can be, I have don't days. <laughs> I, I don't get out of my pajamas. I don't leave the house. I don't do a lot of cooking. Like this is a day that I just need to let my body, my mind rejuvenate. I have two great children. My husband's fantastic. My hobbies are snowmobiling. So living in the North country. Yes, you have to. It, yes. it's, there's got to be a winter sport in there somewhere. <laughs> there does. Yeah. I have very close friends. My mom and I have a, a very close relationship. She travels to my group meetings quite a bit with me. So. Wow. How yeah, nice. It is. That is cool. It is. Wow. Hey, Trace, we can get Ann to come to more of these, right? She wants to she did go to Cancun. You're right. Maybe she just wants to go international. She wants to go. She's only going to do international trips with us. Yeah, I know. A pivot in the business that you could look back at and say it was a really a big thing for you. Two or three years ago, we read the book Traction as a <laughs> process. Mm -hmm. And that's when I made the decision that I am I need to let go of the vine. I am holding the business back. So I've worked very hard these past two years to put the right people in the right seats communicate clear goals, hold them accountable to those goals and build a leadership team. And we've increased our sales last year by 38%. Man, are you the visionary? I am. I got it. So you, you were always in that role, I was. but you couldn't get to do it. Well, I was stuck in, I can be the service advisor. I can save the company <laughs> money, but I couldn't be <sighs> the marketing seat and I couldn't be an effective accounting seat and I couldn't be the effective visionary if I was trying to do too much. So letting go of that vine and seeing a different business and a different model is what has taken us where we are today. Well, you know, we have a page on our website. There's a lot of great pages that do a lot of great things, but one of them is the books page. And if you, you can go there and see all the books we ever talk about on the podcast, you can click, you can pick it up. Back to the business, something that you do in the shop at Service Plus Auto in Calcium, New York, that no one else does, a competitive advantage? I would say our level of transparency. We've worked really hard to show the customer their specific vehicle. Digital vehicle inspections are a tool to do that. Before that, we had the paper form like everyone else for the multi-point inspection. We would bring customers out into the shop. We would have them specifically come down to see the problem with their vehicle and educate them why the repair is needed. And that to me is the most important thing we can do in our industry because we have a bad rap that the automotive industry is trying to take advantage and sell services that are not needed. And we've taken that one step further. So I would say that would be our competitive advantage. So you've got a pretty fun year planned here. I do. Wow. Lots of travel. And lots of travel, lots of influence on people, a lot of new friendships that you're 
making. Yes. I'm excited for you. I would uh, just, let's change places. Let's go out and, and do this thing. This is great. You got to come back in the future and tell us, you know, again, as you're just starting out with this new coach facilitator job, I'd love in a year. So, Jen, how'd it go? Well, thanks you know, for being we, on we board. We need to get you back to and ask you that from because you're going to learn automotive stuff aftermarket podcast. and you're going to teach a lot. Until next time. You're going to change lives. Wow. This was great. I, I love it. And congratulations to you, Jennifer. Holbert from Service Plus Auto in Calcium, New York, um, here with the Institute, here in St. Pete's, and uh, new coach and facilitator for the company. Thank you so much uh, for your transparency. <laughs> Thank you for having me.